Good call from Indiana Coalition for Open Government. How are you? Well, I'm good. Uh, glad you called. Uh, how are you doing, sir? Yeah, I listened to your message. Uh, sounds like an interesting uh, situation. I, um, you know, that law enforcement uh, exception in the state law is kind of tricky. Um, police departments tend to get away with a lot under that. But we could take a look at the uh, the response uh, for you if you want. Um, I mean, we're a nonprofit organization, so we don't really get involved too much other than just kind of giving people a little bit of informal advice. Um, I think probably what your best bet is going to be is to um, file a, a complaint with the um, Indiana Public Access Counselor. Yes, I've already which done is, that. Uh, oh, you did that? Okay. Yes. But, yeah, we'd be, we'd be interested in taking a look. Um, would you mind sending us a copy of, the, of your request and the, the denial that you got? Yeah, that's no problem. Uh, I just got the denial for the probable cause affidavit yesterday, um, so I can forward you that, and I'll just – it'll be on an email thread, so you can go through all the past emails, because there's a bunch of emails that led up to the denial. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it seems like these probable cause affidavits are ordinarily, uh, you know, public records, and I, I can't – that, that seems to be a pretty strong argument there. They're, they're you know, they're not – considered to be investigatory records generally because they're they're usually pub publicly filed so uh, that shouldn't be denied under that exception but you know police agencies are always trying to get away with you know putting as much as they can under that but i think you might be able to get some satisfaction from the access counselor but uh yeah we, we can definitely take a look um if you could send it to our general email that would be great because uh, there's another gentleman who looks at that as well, um, named Zachary Bale, who's the president of ICOG. Um, so the the email address is info at Indiana Cog. That's Indiana C O G dot org. Hold on. And then uh, yeah, we can take a look. So info. That's the right. At, the at symbol. At, Yep, at Indiana C O G, Indiana Cog dot org. There's no dot or anything like that, just Indiana C O G altogether? Yeah, that's right. Indiana C O G dot org O R G. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Like, like I said, we you know, we don't we're just a small volunteer non profit, so we don't really get involved in kind of helping mediate these things or anything, but, but we, we like to track issues like this and, um, you know, we might be able to, uh, offer some informal advice on it. Zach is pretty good at kind of negotiating these things with agencies. So he might have some, some insight that I don't, but, uh, right. I, I mean, just so we're clear and so that nobody is, you know, misinformed as to what, what I'm looking for, or what you guys are offering and all that is that I never was trying to, get you guys involved or mediate. Or oh, sure. Like that. Um, I just saw, and it, I guess this is my predictions were correct, is that I saw on the website, it seemed to me like this was some sort of grassroots organization. So I was just trying yeah. to make you guys aware that. Yeah, that's great. And that, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, I yeah. just like people to know for sure. You know, sometimes people um, want, to, want us to get involved on their behalf and make requests or intervene, and it's just not something we're equipped to do. But, yeah, I, I appreciate you. You're saying that because no, yeah, we do. We we pretty much are like a tracking organization, and we try to educate the public, and and sometimes we do lobbying. So, so this is right. No, and that's well. that's exactly why I contact your organization because I mean, I'm not going to try to make you carry my water and do my own prerequisite request. I'll do that myself, but I just feel like I've been trapped inside my head for weeks now with this story, yeah. and that nobody knows and nobody cares. Most people just want to go home and watch football, so. <laughs> if I could get, yeah, if I could just reach out to an organization like you guys, even if it's five years or ten years from now, someone somewhere might reach out to your organization and hear about my story, and then they might have a similar situation so that this story doesn't just get lost in time, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's very valuable to us, actually, especially on this this particular uh, subject, because the, the law enforcement, you know, there are several exceptions in the, the records law that, are subject to, uh, you know, really abuse by the agencies. And this is one where it's just a big loophole that, uh, you know, agencies can drive a truck through. And so at some point it's going to be a, 
a fight, you know, where we try to get the, you know, a better definition or get this exception sort of more restricted and limited. Um, so the more information we have on situations like this, the, the more useful it'll be. So yeah, we we definitely appreciate that. Well, so, unfortunately, unfortunately, to add to what you just said, I have some more bad news for you. Is that everything you just said sounds like bad news when it comes to open government and open records? But there's actually right. more bad news. And I'm no lawyer and I'm no scholar. I just found this out on my own recently the hard way. But it's even worse than what you just said because what you're saying is that there's exceptions and loopholes within the Indiana uh, Access to Public Records Act. Now, that's, right. that's just one way that there's loopholes and secrecy. Now there's a whole nother, um basically, chess game, like mystery ambiguity thing going on, and that is with the court system. Because when I contacted the Allen County, Indiana court system, where I thought that I shouldn't have any problems requesting the probable cause affidavits for a search warrant that issued out of that court, they also had their own set of rules, which they uh, apparently right. are the Indiana administrative rules for the court system. Now, right. based on those quote-unquote rules, they have created their own secret uh, process so that they are able to hide. They hid everything to the point where even when I made a formal written request for not even the probable cause affidavit itself, just just the cause number, because what they did is they removed the search warrant from the criminal complaint of the man that's in jail right now. Now, whether he's guilty or not, that's a story for another day. That's an argument for another day. I'm not I'm not arguing that. But the search warrant that got him put in jail is what I was trying to get. And that right. search warrant, what they did, and I'm sure this isn't the first time they've done this. It sounds like they do this routinely. That's just my gut feeling. But what they did is they filed that search warrant under a separate cause number or case number. And some some of them call it cause number. Some of them call it case number when I talk to different uh, right. people that work in the court. But anyway, they filed it under a separate file. And then they claimed that because of that and that alone, no other reason, but just the mere fact that they categorized it under a separate case number, that that makes it a super secret file that nobody can see. And then when I even requested in writing just the number of that file, just the cause number, the case number, they wouldn't even release that. They said that even that is confidential. So there's there's a complete, like, secret process for search warrants, at least in Allen County, Indiana, to where uh, someone like me, just a member of the public, is not even able to access a search warrant that has already been executed. It's not like this is some search warrant that they're planning on doing later. It's already been executed. The guy was already put in jail. It's not like they're still searching for him. And then even then, they're still guarding it as like a state secret right yeah i'm aware of those uh rules of court any uh i think it's a rule nine uh which is a you know once you get the courts involved it's another layer of uh bureaucracy there um so yeah we can i mean if you have any documents like that as well we we, we can take a look at that oh it's it's all my emails i I have all the uh correspondence so you guys will get that but but the point i'm trying to make here is there's a much bigger picture than just there's just one random guy asking for one random search warrant. What I'm saying here is that the judicial branch and the executive branch, which is the police, that they together are creating an entire process, at least in Fort Wayne, Indiana, where police write their own search warrants in secrecy. Those search warrants are then held in the court system in secrecy, and then people are arrested on these search warrants, and no one can see what the probable cause was or or all the details about it. I mean, it's basically like living in another country. That's not how this country is supposed to work. But so, so I, I just okay. wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Yeah. But. Okay. Well, yeah, uh, send, a, send an email along that and we can take a look at it and, um, you know, say we can, uh, well, we'll just, we'll take a look at it and see where we can go from there. Yeah, at the very least, I, like I said, I'm just trying to inform. I'm not I'm not asking for any type of handouts or help or anything like that. If, if in the future someone wants to give me any type of, uh, you know, advice or anything like that, I'm willing to take it. But I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to ask for your organization to step in in any way. Um, now, through this whole phone conversation, I'm sorry, but uh, what was your name again? 
Uh, Jerry Lanoska. I'm right, on the I'm board. On. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, J E R R Y. I'm sorry. What was your last name? Lanoska. Uh, it's how do I spell it's that? L A N O S G A. Okay. Um, all right, Jerry. Well, I will forward you the. I guess I'll start off with the um, the denial letter, which I received yesterday from the Fort Wayne Police Department, and um, and then I'll just going forward from there. I'll forward you some other documents. Okay, that sounds great. Really appreciate it, and appreciate you getting in touch. All right, have a great weekend. Thank you, sir. All right, you too. Take care. Yeah. Bye. 